there's something about the past that's always with us. Uh, something we can't touch. It's like the other realm. And we're always thinking, like, what came before us? What will come after us? And those things dominate our lives. But it's funny because everyday life is gnawing in our subconscious. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about bad decisions. I'm talking about apparitions. I'm talking about translucent white sheets. I'm talking about what's haunting you, bitches. So I'm Dan. And I'm Nick, folks. We're old friends dissecting one topic at a time. People, technology, media, we've got it all covered. Each discussion here is a deep dive into our unique perspective. The taboo, forbidden subjects, they're all on the chopping block, baby. We don't pander to popular opinion. We might even get a little bit dirty. Warning. This podcast may contain mature language and sexual content and is for infotainment purposes only. So join us. Have a good time. Open up your ear holes, because we're going to fondle your follicles. It's been quite a while, and I'm Dan, and... I'm Nick, folks. Wow. Interesting. Look at my settings. This is Fantastic. where I usually you record. Lost the dresser. I did. Uh-huh. And uh, okay. where are the unpainters? No, just in the other room. Oh, it's... Yes, we are. Yeah. New headset. New earpieces. New headset. Old one broke. Uh-huh. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy Strange how that happen. happens. It's like magical or mystical. God damn it. <laughs> That's that line. Never so, mind. Haunting. So we're going to talk about hauntings, ghosts, apparitions, things like that we can't touch, we can't prove. I'm gonna, I want to vent because I'm distraught about two things. Are you distraught? Please do. Yeah. Go ahead. A, missing out on opportunities, making money in the stock market mm-hmm. when you're ah, sitting there. I knew it. Here you go. I uh, I read this new term today that said, like, your foreshadowing of how an outcome will be, like the negative weight of it affects the current decision. It's not mm-hmm. like it's not you projecting risk. It's the pain of feeling past issues you've had and like reliving them before so, you have the action, before you take part of it in it. So you're feeling grief and like loss before you Projection. can actually feel them. Yeah. Mm. missing the opportunity and then regretting that you missed the opportunity even though you were too regretful to take the opportunity it's just a ball well, of isn't, regret isn't that though what keeps us from doing dangerous things or risky things or stupid things I don't I don't know that our I don't know that we weigh things properly it's so it's oh, an emotional purely emotional reaction not based on fact that we're scared of doing certain things and that's how I felt like not taking action when I could have. And I mm. could be like... It could be a hundred air. Yeah, hundred air. Could be a hundred air. Could Look be. You. Could be. Could be, should be, would be. But you didn't. Mm-hmm. You didn't take that risk. Now, would you say you also probably didn't take several other risks that didn't pan out so well? Or was that the only time you ever thought about doing something and you didn't do it? I guess there are a few other ones, but that's that one pains me. I've got pangs from it. The person, what's the called the bias where you only think about the one that would have made you so much money? Oh, it's the uh, survivors. Bias. Survivors bias. Survivors bias. bias. Or, survivors, yeah, something like that. Bias. So I you're very, know. you're very focused on the one thing that would have made me so much money yeah. if I'd just done it. But there are millions of decisions you made every day that, not millions. I doubt you had that much time. <laughs> Hundreds of decisions every day. It's a How many decision decisions you make in a day. I don't know. I was thinking like there's eighty four thousand seconds in a day, so. You're sleeping most of that, so you make a decision okay. every second. You're not making a million, unless you're no. But like, are your decisions multi-platformed? So are they multiple decisions when you make a decision? When you come to Does a c- decision, yeah, yeah, it's like it's like several decisions have been made at once in one second. It's like the moment you wake up, you're like, is it morning? Is like, does that have, like follow a tree of all these like is different the neurons just like firing is and not morning? firing? It- is it morning? Is it light out? Should I wake up? Can I sleep longer? Do I have to do this? Is there snooze? Is there work day? Is there a child screaming? Like these are are they decisions or just kind of like reactions? Mm. Regardless, 
the ghost is what you're talking about. The haunting yeah. feeling that oh, oh That's the only thing that really haunts me as an adult. Cause I don't do you believe in ghosts? Nah, not really. Um as a kid I guess I did. And this is crazy. Do you have everyone has some of these stories. So one of my great aunts or whatever passed and she had a cane and one of the family members took it. I don't remember if it was like my uncle Angelo or someone in the like the my father's side of the family. Mm-hmm. Or no, maybe it was my mom's side. I can't remember. Anyway, no someone cares. had the cane. No one cares. But anyway, they had the cane, they put it up in their attic, and they swore they could hear it thumping. Thumping. Occasionally, every now and then. Doom. Doom. Like she was walking, because that's yeah. her cane. With her cadence, too. Like, doom. Doom. Mm. Doom. So we got it in our house. I remember this. And one time, my mom was like, hectic or frantic and she was like panicked and it was like really late at night she was like did you hear that thumping maybe it's the cane and i was like what's the cane and she told me the story she's like i think the cane and i was like uh i don't like this this feels really weird i don't Hmm. i don't even want to think about it like because i didn't believe in it but i didn't like thinking about it either like i was like what if it is the weird thing is like what's your fear of because your aunt was a good person probably i hope Sure. She murdered oh, she, children. She murdered children. <laughs> <laughs> children. Got, got him. But, <laughs> but uh, I don't know what the fear is. I think it's just the fear that a dead person could come back and do something to a to physical you. object. I guess the assumption Not even there to is... Me. Just... The assumption there is that the ghost is... It, if she exists, then other ghosts exist. And then are other ghosts going to come after you for your other wrong deeds that you obviously did? When you murdered those nine children. <laughs> well, I guess you're asking the whole question of what would a ghost do to you? Do ghosts do anything to people? Has anyone ever been hurt by a ghost? How do you prove? I guess you wouldn't. Like, I guess, also, if a ghost did kill someone, there'd be no evidence. So we wouldn't yeah. know if it ever happened, correct? Unless we prove ghosts real and could find their evidence. <laughs> the ghost murders of 2021. Ghost, <laughs> ghost murders. Yeah, I'm a ghost murder detective. Excuse me? <laughs> I investigate whether uh, deaths are, albeit, perpetrated by ghosts. Oh. oh. You've got some photoplasm on your lips right there. <laughs> <laughs> what well, the happened when you were sleeping? About, uh, that anytime you open a mouth, a ghost could be giving you, like, <laughs> giving you his... Yeah. his That's mouth. what the ghosts are waiting for. That's what they're waiting for. That's why you talk with like this and don't open your mouth fully. Uh, Just keep your teeth clenched. Do not yawn, folks. Ghosts are giving us the business. (laughs) So what is the idea behind ghosts, too? Is it... What's the scientific... I love those scientific paranormal (laughs) investigators. Shows. TV shows. Oh, I love the horror ones that are like... And not even like like in a mockingly way. Paranormal activity? Yeah. And even like... um, Have you seen them? Conjuring. That one's a good one. Okay. I don't watch those. This is yeah. gonna sound weird. Then, I know you're I'm an adult. Yeah. I'm scared of it. Yeah, I don't know. It'll make me scared. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand why people don't like watching them. I I like to be like I get excited. Like it's it's at. You think? So excited. What are you feeling watching it? I just this like the real? I like the the mythos. It's just the like chase? Is there a chase element of the? Of, whoa, maybe there's a little. Oh, what if it was real? Like, is that what you're thinking? I think it's the possibility and then the rules mm-hmm. that the possibility has to live by. Because, like, a good horror movie will set up these rules and, like, not mm-hmm. break them. Like, it, they, like it might bend them right. a little bit. But, like, bad horror movies, like, oh, in the middle of this movie, like, the ghost does something, like, oh, it can't it turn back couldn't. time, but it did. That's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I love about those is, like, it's really a scientific discovery in the beginning. Because, like, someone has an experience. They don't know what it is. They have a hypothesis. They go ask somebody. Somebody's, like usually a person of faith the person of faith Someone usually shoots died them died here yeah. 44 years ago yeah the person of faith usually doesn't help them unless they're mm-hmm. a scientific based like form of faith which is also okay. like part of my ego i guess and then they have to like record it like they like take pictures or they yes. have, like thermal they have to something. find a way to yeah they have to Noises. that is the cool part of those um Draw movies or shows or anything where all of a sudden they're like Go back to that photo album from 1987, and you see them flipping through the book, and they open up a page, and it's just like all deadpan, and you see the picture, and there's like all these white lights in it, and you're like, what the fuck? (laughs) 
and you're like, fuck, it was real. Like, it's kind of, I, I agree with that. There's a cool element to that where it's like, it was also there the whole time, but no one knew to look mm-hmm. for it. There's also a cool element where you touch on where it's like, you're part the of the wronged. Well, and maybe, but it's like, there's a wrong that happened. Oh, yeah. And the person has to figure out what the wrong was and why the ghost is there and to rectify it. Like, those, that is a cool part about yeah, like there is, that is a cool part about the ghost thing where it's like ghosts seem evil and scary and bad, but in like 50% of them, maybe 70% of them, it's like, oh, the ghost just wanted revenge on its murder. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like, ah, oh, he's all right. The ghost <laughs> is cool. Like he's cool. He's just signaling us. Sixth sense. <laughs> yeah. 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 I see dead people. That was wild when you think about that movie. I don't. So that hit us right. I bet there are movies before that that was just completely of, obvious. Of course, it's but probably, it was our age range. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah, and it and, was our and setting. Shyamalan. Shyamalan. Yeah, it Shyamalan. was. Philadelphia. Uh, you know what's funny? Uh, I saw that in a, in one of my only sold out theaters because mm-hmm. I saw it the day it came out, and Tommy it was Tom in Cino. AMC AMC Orleans on uh, like Common Ave or whatever, like in the Roosevelt Mall. <clears throat> and I remember I couldn't sit with my friends. It was the only movie this ever happened. Six of us went, and there weren't six seats. So oh, two of us went over here for, no, me and Jeff, I think. And what was funny is in a fully crowded theater, I was like, hey, Dan, can you see the movie all right? And he said, yeah, blah, blah. And someone said, shut up to us. And I was like, I'm just checking on my friend. And everyone in the theater <laughs> laughed. And it was like, yeah, uh, yeah, I was a dickhead. It was like 13 time. or 10 or whatever the fuck I was. Yeah. But that movie really, really got me when I was like, oh, shit. And spoiler alert, folks. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> what? Mind blown. Uh, it was well done. Yes, yes, it was well done. The ring rolling across the floor because she dropped. Yep. It. Yes. Mm. Correct. And it's funny because that movie starts with him dying. Yeah, Isn't that a Wahlberg does. too? One of his brothers or something? I think it is. The weird guy that shoots him is a Wahlberg. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, I think it's a Wahlberg. I'm pretty sure. Strung out meth head or whatever he is. Oh no, he's one of his patients, right? I forget. Either way, either way, we're probably butchering, we're butchering <laughs> six cents at this point. It's okay. But the, the point is, like, I think ghost stuff is cool. And I'm looking at the definition, and it's like a ghost is a soul of the spirit of a dead person or animal, which is kind of cool, huh. that can appear to the living. In ghost lore, description of ghosts vary widely from invisible presence to translucent or barely visible, wispy shapes to realistic life forms. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of cool. Hmm. But it's like all about the past, right? A that's ghost cool. is never from nowhere, right? It has to have a like a setting, a well, human like, setting. Ghosts and demons, right? Like demons are not necessarily ghosts, but you think mm-hmm. they have the same power. Like to, they could invade your mind, essentially, and warp it. Okay. I think that's the fear. I guess, but like, what is it? What does a ghost do to you? Nothing. Physically, well, does it? It scares you, but like, why? Because it appears where it shouldn't. Slams a door at you. I don't know. Do you think the like ghosts voyeurs, aren't like the people here. who want to be seen, are like, "Hey, bring the I'll open the window for the ghosts." Like, <laughs> Wait, do you think they like care? A, is what I'm saying. An exhibitionist. An exhibitionist. Yeah. And like a ghost yeah, is they watching like them. Show off their sex moves, and they're like, "Yeah, bring in some ghosts." <laughs> Photoplasm. Oh. They're, they're uh, whacking, whacking themselves, being like, "Yeah, ghosts, come on, check this out." <laughs> He's got a defining yes. rod. <laughs> uh, that would be some. Uh, wow, turning the sexual with ghosts tonight. It did. It did. Who would have thunk? Yeah. The wow. uh, the other thing with ghosts is like everyone does have like a ghost story. How do you not have a ghost story? Like even I told the cane story. Yeah. Did you ever think you saw a ghost when you were a kid or something like that? No, but there's always that like the weird thing of like um like a light turns on or like yeah there are moments when it makes perfect sense like electronics and stuff <laughs> malfunction so like there's one time my garage light was on and i heard a bump but the door was locked but i was like holding the door like trying to figure out whether i should open it and i was like trying mm-hmm. to figure out what it could possibly be like i legitimately thought it was a person in there but you open it up it's just the light happens to nothing. be on it's nothing there's usually like a mix of like things that like you're looking into like a dark space and you like see something it usually comes from like a dream or like there's a fragment of like a dream reality kind of mix 
It's like my fear know. was always like the basement, like trying to run up the steps when somebody was following me. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you always feel like something's about to close in on you mm-hmm. when you turn off the light and have to go up the basement steps. Can't possibly yeah, get away thing. from it. Oof. The only time I thought that maybe like the good version of that, like a guardian angel, like my mom said, like if you ask a guardian angel, guardian angel what their name is, mm-hmm. a name will pop into your head. You told me this before. Yeah. You may have even been on the podcast. What was the name? Helen. Yeah. It's really weird that I don't know any Helens. <laughs> But a Helen popped in my head. But I do like Helen Hunt. She's fabulous. That's fair. I liked her in uh, Mad About You. Great yeah. show. Yeah. And, tw- and Twister. Twister. As good as we'll it gets. give a shout out to Twister. She's got and a lot as of good hits. As it gets. <laughs> she better not be dead. I think she we named all of them. Yeah. That's it. Did she listen to the podcast? Mm, I hope. But do you have, a, have you ever done that? I think I asked you that to do it. But I don't know if you did. You did. I think I did it on camera. And I don't remember if I came up with an answer. Did I say like Steve? It was like your really aunt boring. or something. Your dead aunt. Really? I think it was. Mm. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> so, <laughs> one time, and this is the weirdest memory I have. <clears throat> you talk about guardian angels. I I was riding my two wheeler, and uh, it was a huffy, in my driveway, and I remember I I should have fallen off my bike head first because I hit a something and lost mm-hmm. control, but I somehow was back on my seat, and I in my head I thought I flipped all the way and landed which mm-hmm. is impossible but anyway I think I told my mom and she was like it was your guardian angel and I was like maybe mom because of whatever the hell happened shit. <laughs> <laughs> she's like maybe he's full of crap again but I don't know like think of that but... how long did you believe in Santa Claus for? Uh, I forget what grade I was in I remember because all the kids in grade school would talk about it like it's not possible. My one really smart best friend was like, actually, if you went through different time zones, it would be possible if you could slow down time. And I was a little like, what? I think it was in first grade. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, Hank, go off, King. Hank was like giving me some science for Santa. And I was like, I believe still. But probably within a year or two of first grade. I don't remember which year it was. In fact, science. I actually know what it was. I kind of didn't believe in Santa, but like, I'm not going to call my parents out or anything like because I'm in third grade or second grade. And my parents were like, hey, Nikki, do you want to help um, wrap the presents? I don't want I don't want your two sisters to know Santa isn't real. And I was like, oh, yeah, I got you. I got you. And like I just remember going with it and being like full send. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. But like and that's literally how they gave me the sex talk. I remember they were like, hey, Nick, um, I don't want to show your two sisters. <laughs> Well, no, that's, they literally said that. They were like, hey, you know, like, uh, when you give that talk when you're old enough and everything, and I was like, oh, y- yeah, and they're like, you know all that stuff, right? And I was like, mm-hmm, they're like, awkwardly, like, yeah, and they're like, how should we tell your sisters? And I was like, you just, you just gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> like, I was in, like, fourth grade or something, and they were like, yeah, and I think it was their way of just seeing if I knew and not really asking, yeah. and just... You know what I mean? Like gauging me and being like, okay, thanks. So like that's, that's how it works, dude. You kind of just, hey, what should we tell your sisters? <laughs> I think what you're getting into yeah. is that the unexplained is what pops into your head. If there's something uh, you can't, like there's no scientific fact about it, you can't reason it through, you expect there is to it be all a bullshit? protector is it all or bullshit? like a dementor. Okay. Yeah. Is it all bullshit? I don't know. I think when I was younger, you're a man I felt of like... science, dude. You're a man of science. You love facts and logic. I think you wanted to. Didn't you apply for a thing to marry facts and logic? <laughs> they didn't want me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the relationship was not mutual. Yeah. No, I it wasn't logical. I love I love these things that like you can't put your finger on. Like, or you can't, yeah, because it's really a matter of faith whether you believe in ghosts. But people don't like pester you on it. They're like, oh, you don't believe in ghosts? You should believe in ghosts. Like, these are my ghosts. Like, check out my ghosts. I hear the pamphlet. These are all seen ghosts. This? Listen, my cousin saw one actually turn on a light switch, and it literally scared everyone at the party, and everyone screamed. And a, a cake broke, and another light switch turned on, and a door closed. And it's like, whoa, that's pretty, whoa. Like, that, would, that would be crazy if that happened, but I feel like the facts aren't all straight here. Yeah, the person's not straight. Their mentality and everyone, is warped. Well, and here's the problem. Everyone has a cell phone, right? Yeah, you would have thought that they would have taken. So that's another thing: is the revolution of technology makes it so that they, 
like all of the aliens and like the um, mm -hmm. Bigfoot, yeah, Loch Ness, Bigfoot. all the all, all those the guys, mysteries. dude, all the homies. They get there's a smaller and smaller window for them to exist. I guess theoretically they could still exist, but mm -hmm. Man, that window is pretty goddamn tight. What are we gonna do right? about it now, Nick? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, um, Rah! yeah, that sad. It's like the one thing. What about aliens? Like aliens is the one thing that, like, if you if you can't take a picture of it on Earth, it's like maybe mm -hmm. something exists, but it's not on Earth. It's mm -hmm. like maybe it takes a long time for them to find us. If an alien is here, maybe they're more advanced and you don't see them. All right. Maybe it's we'll all those this. things of like signs and you like they blur into the background and you go, whoa, what? Okay, so the only issue I have is from playing No Man's Sky, if like literally it takes like 44 hours at light speed, let's, let's oh, even say their so technology is that great. Yep. They do 44 hours of driving, right? They they're get tired. to a planet. Yeah. I, even if they're not tired, dude, then what? They like they're in the atmosphere. Then they go pick a guy, and then they gotta drive forty four hours again. No, like, no, no. They somewhere? got a base in their ship. They just do all their own. Where is it? They have bases here on Earth. No, no, no. Their whole ship is a base. They just okay. I understand that, but then after the abduction, what do they do? They go the home. Probe. After the probe, what do they do? They experiment. And they... After the experiment, and they put the person back. What do they do? They wipe his memory like a man No, what do they do? What are the aliens doing? They're just... I'm asking. I guess they're going back then. I guess they're... Going back where? 44 hours the other way? That's a big commute. Maybe they got other plans to check. They just go, okay. What other planets? It's going to take 44 hours to get to the next nearest planet. It doesn't make sense. It's just a boring, really long commute. It just seems sloppy. Like, So you're no, telling us not. the aliens that we're going to get are like the government workers of that alien civilization. It's just like, ugh. Uh, another one. I'm tired of this. And they just, you know, they how stamp the book they, and they how... say, "I was here. I got five humans today. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of this yeah. shit." They always go, "Ah." It's, it's a that's a long commute. I don't think it would fly anywhere. I mean, what's the pay? Are they getting paid more than any other creature on their civilization? Maybe. I don't know. But then, are you paying for that much information about a probe in some farmer's asshole? So the thing is. Mm -hmm. Like we discount this tremendously, but what if there was an alien invasion? Do you think right. they would destroy us before we even were like, "Oh, aliens exist"? <laughs> we wouldn't believe it. Well, would well, what do they want ultimately? They want our resources. Then yeah, probably. Do they want us? Because maybe they could use us for something. Yeah, then no. I mean, things. they enslave us or whatever. They got to do one of the two, I guess. Hmm. I don't know. So what we're talking about before. You sidetrack me. You're such oh. a sidetracker. Mm -hmm. Sidetracker. Sorry. It's the unexplained, the stuff we can't explain. Like, everyone has a story about, like, a, the great Aunt Miriam saw a light one time when her husband was dying and he coughed up a sausage he was choking on and it saved his life. And you're like, that's amazing, Aunt Miriam. I can't believe that you saw a light, he coughed up the sausage, and he didn't die. But I don't know. It just... Like, even my girlfriend has a story. I think where the night her nana passed, I think, like, she saw her image in a dream, and she said, play the lottery number, and they played the number, and they won, like, 700 bucks, and they swear by it. And I'm like, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Why wouldn't she just give you more money or, like, give you the lottery number every night? Or, like, I don't know. Didn't she pick a higher number? Like, a higher winnings? I don't know. So the one... I guess the rebuttal here is the people who actually like go the lengths after they believe they see ghosts, like mm -hmm. the Winchester Mansion, like the okay. the woman who was married to the person who invented that and killed, yeah, I don't know how many Indians, but like she believed that all the Indians were like trying to follow her in her house, so she built these rooms that just went nowhere, and like all these different hallways and passageways so that she could evade all the ghosts sounds like a scary ass house anyway regardless of ghosts <laughs> you're making it worse good lord <laughs> you're making a scary house lady fun now i do believe in energies let's say you literally killed a thousand indigenous people somewhere within like i don't know a quarter of a an acre it changes right? you it must it has to what if it's i'm not even talking about you what about a house would it change a house hmm. i mean a house is just materials but I also feel like that's fucking 
So this is like There's a something? Vsauce okay. thing where like you have a smell, you have a eminence. Did he do one on this? You yeah. Well, this is your like how do you perceive people and how much do you persist okay. and then like you give off this like oh. radiance that like exists in the galaxy along with your noise and all this stuff. But like sure. if someone has been in a room mm -hmm. and they leave that room and then you enter the room, like immediately, well, if they're in the room, you see them, right? If okay. they're walking Obviously. away from the room, sure. you can hear them even though they're not in the room. Okay. If they were just in the room and you sit down where they were, you can feel their warmth or their scent. So like okay. you can sense that someone was there. But there's other like forms like sharks can like sense like EM radiation, so they yes. can like s like see you essentially with a like yeah. the spectrum we can't see. Correct. But maybe we can sense that in some ways, but we just don't know it. So like. So how long would it stick around though? Like so you're saying their EM radiation or their electromagnetism or something some other element is yeah. left behind. So maybe there are pieces but we don't understand that we can sense like if. But wouldn't you feel that there. from other normal people? And wouldn't you get that when you walk into the DMV and thousands of people were walking in and walking out? Do you ever you get, would you would essentially get the same feeling, wouldn't you? Do you ever get a feeling that someone's watching you and you look up and you yeah. stare right at them? Yeah. How? How is that possible? Like if they're behind you and you you like do the quick turn, like the fast turn, and they're all right they don't even move. Already they're starting to look they're away. They're already oh. yeah, they're like they make eye contact but they're like Whoa, look away. Oh god. Oh uh, caught me, caught me. <laughs> um, How is that know. possible? I've, I've seen studies. I've read studies on this, and they're like kind of inconclusive results. And I don't know what it is. I think they know what it isn't. It's not like electro. I don't know. It's. I think it exists. It, so that like okay. that's. I think you can sense other people, and I can. Sen I think you can sense when other people have like passed away in a space. So okay, that's a different thing. That's a yeah. whole different thing than what you're just talking about. Staring that's a big at, jump. at people, yeah. you can sense. Yeah, and that's whatever. You might be on to something. So you can tell when someone died in a room. Why would that be? Do you think you release something when you die? Do you think there's a soul element? Yeah, it's like a half-life decay of your body that you can like sense. Like, oh wait, I just got hit with a like a piece of radiation from that half-life decay. Like their Except bones at death. Yeah. Decay. You you don't. <clears throat> So like I, maybe the human body can sense something that like okay. you're on an Indian burial ground and like it's just like emitting something that you pick up. Like I think you definitely could smell death. Like death is very distinct. Okay. But I wouldn't disagree with that. I, I agree. Like if someone had been a part of like, Im do you think they can impress themselves on on things on objects? Like that's like a Horcrux well, you, type of thing. Like if you die on a thing, yeah. Do you think it is? Do you think the sword of like a great warrior who has killed Ooh. multiple people? Do you think that had like you hold it and it feels differently? Like you sense something from it? There's a new one. I don't know. That's a great question. And there's probably is there even a way to test it? I guess are the atoms on it different? Are they aligned differently? Is there extra atoms of the deceased on it? Like not enough that you would be able to see it or smell it, but that you would be able to know they're there in some intrinsic way. Kind of want to have huh. this test, the replica <clears throat> swords, and someone like tries to figure out which one is. So actually you want to go? The, you want to you want to do the goddamn TV show with the, the scientific ghost show? Yeah. But you're gonna you have a new way to do it. Yeah. That wouldn't be a bad idea. No, I that, would I would watch the whole show. Yeah, I actually would. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like, has a person died like around this item? Like, yes or no? Do you know? Like, like we do know that someone died on this item. The floor is lava. <laughs> Run, jump. <laughs> Oh, hilarious but I, I think I, know, I think you can sense people and I think people leave a mark and for some reason you stop moving but hopefully you'll come back what oh, oh there you go you came so back right here okay oh, good. Where, I was like it didn't even blip for me didn't strange. even blip strange not even a blip not even a blip but I think you can sense people I, I think they. I think they leave something and I think you can pick up on it or dying itself releases a different yeah. something that we can sense. Like kind of like impulse. the way being born actually does leaves a a scent or a feel or a thing. I don't know. How do you did you feel your 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 child being born? Do you sense it? Yeah, I um. So I was in the room. My grandmother died, and it was like 
five of us all around her, and she was doing the labored breathing, and she had cancer and all that. I said born. And I, I said do, birth. No, I know, but I'm, I'm mentioning oh, this because it's similar. We've heard this. So, <laughs> so when she actually passed, it was so weird because without anyone moving positions, there were five or six people in the room, and then there was one less. Hmm. There was one less person in that room. But no one had moved. No one had changed positions. We were all like standing around, like holding arms or hugging or whatever it was. I don't even hundred percent remember. It was but like, like tension in her body that's released or something. I guess it was weird, dude, because it was like there are five people here, and then like a minute later, I was like, there are only four people here, and I could feel that. It's similar to when my son was born. Before he cried, like I guess as he cried, I'm not hundred percent sure, but like. They took him out because it was C-section, and uh, and it was like there's a whole new person here. Like there's literally a new life. Yeah, but that person was always yeah. there. He was just inside I, somebody I else. It just, but it felt different. I don't know. Like it was, like there was a new person in the room. Like if someone walked in, it was like how many people we got in here? They got to count differently. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't know. You don't think you can weird. sense the nurses and doctors as they pulled the, the baby out, and like once there's a sigh of relief. The, the, the tent, like the tension in the room's gone. Uh, it could be, and that may be part of it. But literally, there's also just that weird fact that now there's an extra person in the room. Now there's one less person in the room. So there is something that gets left behind, or a person emanates that isn't just their sight, smell, sound, whatever. There, there has to be an extra thing. It's the only so like in my mind, the visuals of like my son being born, like. The I forget what they call it. That one he line. He walked out, right? Yeah, right. He's, he's fine. Second one, he walked <laughs> out. No, no, no. He walked. It's like a his... swordsman, musketeer, <laughs> Zorro. No, um, but like that that line of like when they breathe in like oxygen for the first time, like it starts to like mm -hmm. move up their body. And I got to watch that like happen, where like you could see the life like filling up his body, like his health bars. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. But like it was really weird because he's like he's in a shock mode where he's silent. Until it like hits his shoulders, and then he cries. And like, it will, yeah, lungs, right? Yeah. I guess. Kind of like, yeah, he gets moving. But it, that is like the most, I guess, the most closely related thing I can I can tie that, to like that's opposite why of death. I yeah, my grandmother dying because like it did feel similar, just opposite. If that made sense. Hmm. I don't know. I'm kind of curious if like nurses have the same thing. Like they. Like the nurses that were like taking care of, like when my Hospice children were born. And stuff? Well, the oh, first, yeah, either, way. either reverse, okay. either way. Like, they must. They're so intertwined with that like life, birth, death, death cycle yeah. that like maybe they feel it more, or maybe they don't. Maybe they just like. Maybe it just becomes I some do, some don't. Routine. I don't know. Wow. Well, what about haunting? If I were to kind of round it out, like, so I think. I said 50 to 60% of our stories are about like what went wrong or someone was Fears. wronged yeah. and that's why haunting happens but like is that all of them maybe even like why else is there a ghost it's not like ah she lived a great life she passed quietly in her sleep she had three grandchildren anyway we remember her and had a great day like it's not like she's haunting people this is Rosemary or whoever like she's not coming around rattling chains going woo like it's always someone whose family member was murdered or that they were murdered or something weird happened or do you know what I mean? So this goes back to like the essence of like Halloween and then I think Halloween is supposed to be like kind of like a level of purgatory. The people who are mm -hmm. being judged, right, are not allowed to pass on to the the positive or the negative <laughs> heaven or hell. So yeah. like they're they're in limbo. Stuck in neutral. Limbo is the place where ghosts come from, right? The ones that haunt us. Supposedly. Yeah, I guess so. But, yeah, no, I would 100% agree with Beetlejuice, that. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Well, don't say that, dude. But <laughs> do you ever? Oh, how about that? Like, dude, do you ever do that stuff? Like, uh -huh. uh, alone in a mirror, say Bloody Mary three times Red in a rum. mirror or something. Yeah. Did you do that? Yeah, of course. I was way too afraid. I think I did it like twice, and I like wet my pants and ran away. <laughs> do you think? I don't know. That's the one thing is that you, psychologically. I guess it's different if you if you completely don't believe any of it. Well, this is the mm -hmm. this is the problem is that movies, the person who doesn't believe any of it, they're the person who dies first, right? 
<laughs> always yeah. so like this is some bullshit there's a kernel of like even if you don't believe it this is a form of brainwashing even if you don't believe it and you say it it's going to be as like a kernel in your brain and then when you go to sleep like it'll it'll realize itself in your brain it'll it'll linger yeah i think the scariest thing that happened to me like the scariest real thing was that i was in bed i woke up in the middle of the night i went to reach my phone and i was like i was just like half asleep i I hit, the, like, the first video to listen to the video. And then I heard talking outside of my door. And I put my phone down, and I was like, "I'm that couldn't be real. And then I just sat up. I sit up, and I look around. I try to, like, make sure that, like, I can't hear, like, wind. Because, like, if they broke a window to get in, I, like, listen to the wind. And I was just listening for that, but they kept talking. And I was like, there's definitely someone talking. Like, I think someone broke in. And what I realized... Like as I, my heart started like beating and getting sweaty, yeah. is that my uh, Bluetooth speaker was attached to my phone and I was listening to a video with sound. <laughs> uh, good one. <laughs> that, that would that would mess you up. Fuck, fuck you, man. Fuck you. That would fuck that you up. Fuck you up, man. <laughs> fuck you up. <laughs> the um scariest thing that happened to me recently because I probably had scarier stuff, but was I think I mentioned it. My garage door, like something's wrong with it. Uh huh. It'll okay. open or close randomly, usually okay. once every four months. Someone has your code. I know that and sounds steal like from you. I said you would think, but it's, it's once every four months. Now it's like once every five. They're minutes, checking to so see if any money, it. and they go, "Nope." <laughs> they uh, keep going. And it was like two a.m., and I thought I heard the garage door oh, open, and it was you. raining. Oh, Dude, fucked me up. It was like November, so it was around this time of year, or whenever this gets released. But I um, I walked down. I like open my eyes it's like 2 a.m i'm the only one up i turn on the lights i open the garage or the door to the garage to see if it was open mm -hmm. yep why the fuck open pouring rain outside hello yeah. like a wiener i was just saying hello stab <laughs> me right now someone say something and like i'm looking around the garage and every figure every stored box every old toy we had i was like is someone hiding behind all these things and it was just the most surreal thing because I could hear the rain going I could see no one's footprints no one's anything and I was like maybe the garage door just opened again <laughs> like what do you do You're close it dude it. lock the door and go back to bed well there's the, like that sense of your brain like trying to avoid risk like that one story you heard of someone breaking in through the garage door it's like that's there and you and I are both physically able strong males in the middle mm -hmm. of our lives so we're mm -hmm. capable of defending ourselves for the most part not not behind like not in the dark a surprise attack yeah when someone has a weapon you never know that's still scary that's true if someone has a weapon we're screwed if someone has a knife yep. run if someone has yeah. a gun oh, hell yeah also run <laughs> also run but i knew uh i still know uh, a woman who was about our age who she lived alone in a house by herself and she I, th I think she was working out or something in her house and she heard a window break so she ran to see what happened and she saw someone crawling in her window so she ran into her master bedroom and into her bathroom and locked the door and then that person was like rifling through her stuff really quickly as she was behind the door like bracing the door oh, hoping they wouldn't like no. bust it through so I don't know if she said anything about, like, I'm calling the cops. Like, I'm sure she did. But yeah. it's like that same story, if it happened to me, like, you and I would probably, like, Kinda confront the person. Ass, yeah. Depending, especially as they're crawling. Not, like, after yeah. they get in, because you don't know what's going on. But as they're prone and trying to crawl into you your window. kick them in the face, yeah. Yeah, you go right up to them and say, what the fuck? Is Drop kick them out the windows. Out. If you can. <laughs> if you can. If you can. <laughs> but, yeah, there's different levels of scary there. This is the level of fear is like I don't know that we can understand the level of fear that like you know this woman was like a f five foot nothing like she has no re no recourse. No, and you know what that that fear you feel when you're like six years old and you're running up the basement steps and the lights are out. Yeah, watch your ankles because it's gonna get That's you. That's the strongest fucking feeling in the world. It really compels you. You you couldn't stop if you wanted to. Mm. So what's your favorite, I guess, figment of your imagination? Or, like, the best... 
So like mine for mine is zombies. Like the thing that people invented to be like the scary thing, even though zombies are kind of mockable, I think it's the most real. Because it's zombies eat your brain, so zombies are really like it, this is my my current interpretation of it is that there are people who don't believe anything who are hungry for stuff and they constantly want to Keep take coming. away your your knowledge they want to hmm. break you down and eat you up and they they come in hordes so like this is like you know someone Another calls you a heretic thing. and there's a mass of people and like people is it a person is smart people are dumb yeah and uh there's more to that quote but if you have a group of people like attacking you for no reason they just assume that you're like you deserve whatever you're going to get it's like there's hard yeah. ways to die to get torn apart by like a mass of people like you just your faith in humanity is is ruined there and also you can't fight like if someone outnumbers you they just force you into horrible you can, conditions but it is only either a matter of time a matter of ammo a matter of location a matter of distance mm-hmm. before you lose yes they're everywhere you can't avoid yeah, it. Yeah, I can see that. I think I... Hmm. You don't have one of your favorite? No, I don't think I do. I don't have a favorite. A favorite creature? Not like it? I think... Clowns? No, not clowns. I'm not a clown guy. How about like... Uh, I still think aliens creep me out. I don't know. I think because aliens can really take any form. Well, I, no, I don't like the, like, gray, greenish, like, big-headed ones that don't talk and don't do anything, because, like... They're inert. Yeah, I don't like that. It's like, oof, just attack me or something. Stop looking at me with your big black eyes. <laughs> you got a, fucking freak. a clipboard this is recording everything you do. Yeah, like, that's... Oof. Yeah, they want to record you more than anything, and that's, I don't Stop know, that's judging. creepier. Stop judging me! <laughs> that's my butthole! <laughs> It's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I don't like any of them. I think it's all about loss of control, really. So you don't have any it power is. against these imaginary things. I think that's where well, all these and, like chants and incantations and stuff come from. Is like, it's supposed to protect it's also you? Symbols. How we started talking about the episode, the hauntings. Like you're haunted by it. Like it. It almost feels like a bad decision come back to you. A bad one wrong move has come to get you. Uh-huh. Like, we had talked about you can be haunted by things, you can be haunted by these creatures, you can be haunted by things you didn't do, things you did do. I think the the worst is that, like, the actualized worst is when you can't forgive yourself for things. Which I think is the most haunting thing, is when you do something wrong towards other people or towards yourself, and, like, you you just can't grapple. Yeah, like, it breaks your... Don't try your sense of someone. You're like, structure. oh, my bad. No, you can't really... I don't know how you come back from that. Yeah, if your foundation gets shattered and you're just like, well, this is like beyond anything I ever thought I would do. Yeah. How do you... I don't know if you can come back from that. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. So why did you want to talk about haunting? I forget. It was like weeks so ago. long ago. It was so long ago. I just thought there was a lot of room to talk about it. And like what we just talked about where you can beat yourself up about stuff. You Haunting is it's almost an emotion, a feel, like that running up the steps when you're six. Uh-huh. Um, that regret that, I mean, you, you don't get time back. Like the cool thing about a ghost story is you can resolve it, but really the scary part is you can't. It's over. It happened. It's bad. And it's too late. You don't get to go backwards and fix it. So what about the reverse of that? Is that so? When we're young, we're told ghost stories, and they're like scary to us. What about the old person who like wants to be remembered by like making an impression? It's like maybe the only way he can make that impression is by leaving a, a story that's so scary that it gets retold over and over, over and, over. and over again. So his so his way to his be ghost. remembered is telling you a ghost story. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. How about scary? What scary stories I tell in the dark? What was that? No, what was that Nickelodeon? Are you afraid of the dark? Are you afraid, Are you of, the afraid of the dark? Yeah. Saw dough, no mister, accent on the dough. That I don't, guy? Uh, I don't remember that. You would, you would recognize this picture. It was the dude. who He was a recurring character. Pinball wizard. 
Which ones do you remember of that he show? He was probably in the Pinball Wizard. Almost none of them. Uh, we've talked about the one on the show, Lizard People. Oh, yeah, there's like a pool of eggs. Yeah. And then they like, <clears throat> discover them. I love it because it's so, yeah, I don't know. Well, it was also the age range, the time. That was on SNCC, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, late night. I used to read Goosebumps. Hell yeah, man. What was uh, the puppet? Slime Mary. in the basement? No, no, I remember the puppet one. I didn't. <clears throat> Chucky. What's in the basement? Slime in the basement? Oh, dude. I can remember the covers to the uh, the books, oddly enough. What's under the sink? What's in the closet? Like, they were all. They're all like, very really relative, cryptic. yeah. And they were like things that you experience in your own house. Relevant, like yeah. R. L. Stein. <clears throat> What's in the cover? Uh, do you ever, do you ever read scary, scary actual books like for adults, not just children? Um, Dean Koontz and like um, what's his name? The, the, how am I forgetting the, the number one? Oh, Stephen. Uh, I was gonna say. Thank Stephen, you, King. Stephen King. King. King, yeah. King. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen Hawking. <clears throat> Stephen King. There are a lot of so. What's the scary? Lot was pretty scary, but it. Yeah, I think Salem's Lot was a good one. Uh, Elm was really good. It was like the whole town's like vampires and like your children laughing in the background and it's like cold wind everywhere and like people were dying and people were losing energy and getting weaker every day and no one knew what was going on. Like that's, that's creepy stuff. His best book was like The Stand, which is like a 900-page book. I remember I read that and it was essentially a plague that just wiped over the earth similar to huh, similar things going on. But hmm. – but it literally like would kill people within three days of them having it. And that was a cool book. I like the stand. But like those authors, it's writing a scary book is way different than a scary movie. Is it, Do you know what I mean? It is Stephen King, right? Yeah, it was Stephen King. I never read it. Uh, I never read it either. I wonder if um it too or whatever was based on a book or if they just made the sequel to the movie. They I actually don't know. They split up like. Oh, you're talking about the second part of it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like they have the kid version, and then when they grow up, it's like it is still persisting because it's every 27 years. What a, what a round-off number. Yeah. But but again, that's funny, too, because there's a folklore to it. Like, that's what hauntings are. You just mentioned how it's like an old guy around a campfire. Mm -hmm. It's something that won't go away, either. It's like every 18 years, this happens once a year on the red moon, something happens. I think there's something cool about that. Like, like it's like Dead by Daylight. Those people, like the the villains, and then the campsite, Mike Myers, Halloween. Those are yeah. all the the problem. Cyclical. They, mm -hmm. They're cyclical, and they always come back, and they never die. But they always it's always rooted in some sort of like um, religious bias against something. It's always like the kids fooling around. Like whenever a girl would be like uh, nude yeah, in the beginning, like uh, she's yeah, gonna yeah, yeah. she's gonna killed. Well, I don't know that it's rooted in that. I think it takes it happens when they're doing that. It happens when you're being bad. I don't know that it's happening because they're being bad. Like you know what I mean? Hmm. But like it's happening because it's happening. But it'll take advantage of you if you're being naughty in the woods. If you're not paying attention and doing the bad exactly. stuff. If you're not paying attention, mm -hmm. like we told you. I don't know. I feel like I feel like I'll never be a person that believes in ghosts. It's just not my thing. But I want to, and I like to hear people's versions of ghost stories, or hotels that are definitely haunted. You know. I always love. Uh, yeah. So this brings me back to like this is Dan Bell. Like he usually does, explores like dead malls or urbex. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He did like uh, dirty hotels, and then he did also like haunted hotels. And, like mm -hmm. some of the haunted hotels, like I could understand because they're they're built in such a way that they're like kind of shoddy, and shaky, right. like the wind, <clears throat> and like things like you don't get a good sleep. So like I could imagine if you it's went to one of these haunted, hotels, yeah, if you went to the one of these hotels and stayed like a week, and you don't get any sleep by the end of it. Your delirium is gonna take you take over, mm -hmm. and you're gonna imagine all this like random stuff. That's the other part that we haven't touched on is that your brain like naturally comes up with all oh, these course. scenarios. And if worst you, case risk. Yeah, if you're on drugs or you don't sleep, it's like it's like lack of sleep for like three days is equivalent to like getting hammered. So like your your delirium is off the charts, and you're yeah. like just 
fabricating mm-hmm. all these things that are happening and you're just like what's going on it messes with you and when he like when he actually like has the videos of all that stuff like he, you can hear how freaked out he is like he's like I don't know, uh-huh. I want to I want to get out of here right now and it's really like the places he goes are really weird like it's set up really strangely like lobbies and with no also it's also funny that it's it's a it's an um hyperbolic it oh, yeah. kind of starts slow but it goes real fast and then it yeah. yes thank you and it just pushes you faster and faster and faster and all of a sudden you might from like zero to a million in fear and panic and whatever so it, it feeds into it all you need is a little bit a little bit of doubt a little bit of erosion a little bit of what was that and you're gone yeah. so do you have you don't have hmm. a favorite like horror story like the two I touched on the paranormal activity because it was it's yeah. rel- it's very relative it's like the Arl Stein it's like oh and mm-hmm. down in the kitchen oh in your bedroom it's like you know those things draw you in and then it, like it could be in your own house that, that scares you and then yeah the conjuring just by the way it unfolds like the way i like how it's like fast reason and just like Based methodical in mm-hmm. a way and then it's like uh i like it when it's not like the classic horror where like oh let's all split up it's like i like when it's like <laughs> let's all band together as hard as possible as a group and like mm-hmm. we're still gonna fail i like that because it's different than the yeah when they get separated and get picked off one by one it's almost like agonizing you're like why would you do that why would you go there why would you do that why would you do that yeah going into the shed with all knives and farming yeah, implements I'm just gonna go into the shed <laughs> oh. let's hide under this hay bale yeah no I agree ah. you don't have one you don't have like a one horror movie that you're just like I don't like horror as a genre I don't like ghosts <laughs> Let me think. <clears throat> what is your favorite? Don't you don't have a favorite mythos? I was like, you said like Loch Ness or Sasquatch. Like not even like. I, I think no, you picked like, the joke you want. Them. You don't even believe them. Yeah, you said yeah, aliens. Like they're, they're aliens are creepy. No, I don't really. I don't know. Like War of the Worlds. Like these things are um, already here. That one was really cool, actually. But I only like here. This is what happens to me in most of these movies, genres, clips, ideas. I only like the first third of the movie. Hmm. Like the build up. The really scary where you don't see any bad guys. Yeah, Yeah, 100%. Independence Day, uh, War of the Worlds, which you mentioned. First third of that movie. Oh my god, fucking awesome. Like, there's lightning, and they're like, yeah, this is the craziest thing. The wind is going towards the storm. And it's just such a cool setup. And like, all the lightning strikes in one spot and no one knows what's going on and I love that shit like that mysterious unexplained shit mm. it's when the movie or the book or the, the genre tries to explain it and give you their creature yeah it kind of it kind of falls flat sometimes like it's not perfect well, like, well, like War of the Worlds I remember the movie <laughs> with uh, yeah Tom Cruise Tom Cruise TC baby so like well, at what point did that fall flat for you because like there's a realization there that like, this doesn't match up with what it should be. Uh, same same spot it did with Signs, right? Signs was awesome until you saw the aliens, kind of, and it was like, uh. Uh. Um, But with the, the War of the Worlds was when, I think they, like, started going through his house, the aliens were. Uh, and, the like, thing with, like, had the to giant be quiet. arms, like, the Matrix. Yeah, and everyone like had to be quiet and everything, and I was like, mm. It's just like, it tedious. Was before that. Yeah. yeah, it does, and it feels like, okay, they wiped out, like, 5,000 buildings in eight seconds, and now they're going to quietly Quirk. home through this house and you're just going to whisper and be quiet and they're not going to catch you like I don't it's know it's going through my obliterate. office cabinets and checking my taxes yeah. and making sure I yeah. paid them all it's like come on, <laughs> come on man ooh a tax evader checking it off <laughs> yeah. yeah there's a point where the creator the author the director has to take it in a direction to drive it home it's personal it's, it's not slow as slow it down change the pacing well, yeah, they they just even if they have to show you the bad guy or show you the ghost or show you the alien or show you the monster, there's something you lose. I think it's just scarier when you don't see it. You, it's building up. What about this, oh, the, build up the village? Did you see that one? I did that one. Who was? Do you remember it? it? I remember it ends up being like just in a road off the turnpike. <laughs> Which is hilarious. <laughs> spoiler. That was the kicker on that one. Yeah, yeah. spoiler for is the Is that the monster people. was created to keep them in this little enclave? Yes, that's right. Okay, yeah. And, yeah. That, like, it's cool, but, like, at that point, I'm like, ah, eh, cool twist, but, mm, yeah, not scary anymore. 
It's not a scary movie. Hmm. Are there any scary movies? Oh, Event Horizon? I don't 100% recall Event Horizon. I watched it um, in college, drinking and doing all sorts of stuff. And isn't there one scene where the dude's eyes come out? And... Yes. Yeah. People like I weird. feel like I would enjoy the hell out of that, but I'm, I don't want to get scared. I don't like to watch those movies. Oh, it freaks you out. So... I'll do. I love that movie. I saw that when I like. Okay. It's it's on the same thing as like Sphere, where it's like, you mm-hmm. go you so go to this yeah. place that is isolated, that is supposed to be like your oh, Event Horizon. It's like the what you go in too deep and you can't get out, so you get pulled into it. And like, in Event Horizon, they're on this ship, and I think they're trying to like contact this other ship that was lost, and when mm-hmm. they finally like mate with do. it they find catch the ship. up to it it's empty right yeah it's empty and then they find people in like like hard conditions and like somehow like someone cut out their eyes and they don't know why but then like they slowly like start to drift into this like weird space where they can like see these things that they don't want to see and it starts to make sense that like they would do all of these things to avoid it but it's like you have that like giant spinning like sphere thing that's like kind of controlling what they're seeing and then it's like it's real. It's like you, you you dip your toe into hell, and then you're like don't want to go any deeper. Go but any you can't. further, but you're already you're there. slipping. Yeah, you know, you're sinking into the pit. And then, like it's at that point, it's like do you like can can your brain handle all of the awfulness that like hell is capable it's of in your own brain? Yeah, and yourself is, is capable too? of, or do you just want to like, yeah. end it and get out? And, like, hmm. do other animals even experience this kind of feeling? existential dread and like fear yeah. can they can they i don't know my dog when she sleeps she kicks like crazy like i'm wondering if she's That's like not, running away um existential dread <laughs> i'm sure it is i'm certain i'm certain of it the way she kicks there's no only one yeah. way she's feeling the pull of hell <laughs> we must chastise her and bless her in the <laughs> heart of the holy spirit rip out that heart get it get that heart the exorcist and shit that's a good one, The Exorcist. Hmm. 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 Oh. Hmm. I don't know. I like. I don't know. I think I like this. Could you? Did you play? This is a a long tangent from where we started. But like, um, Dead Space. Did you play those games? No. Like Resident Evil kind of style. I know. I know exactly what yeah. Dead Space is, and I think it would have been cool. I would have enjoyed it, but I think it would have like scared me a little bit. So I was like, mm, nah. I'm afraid of it. I'm scared. Well, like, so okay. Silent. This is what I equated to. Silent yep. Hill. The yep. scariest part of that game mm-hmm. was when I was wandering around the hallways, and it would be hell. It would be real life. There'd be a siren blaring for like 18 straight minutes. Mm-hmm. I didn't know where it was coming from. I didn't know what's in any room. Rooms change as you go room to room. Oh yeah, it was a flashlight and a fucking radio. And I remember one time I was in this one room and it was a locker and I had all the lockers and it, it was shaking. And I was like, fuck, I know I got to open that locker. That's <laughs> and there's literally it. like 80 lockers, it. but the one's the shaking potential. there's blood under it. Oh, there's blood under it. Of course. <laughs> what are you going to do? Guess what? We got to open the locker. So I walk over there. I'm ready for the fight of my life. Oh, I and I it. open it and it was shaking and it goes, it's just a cut scene. And he walks back and he goes, oh. And he opens it, and there's just a locker filled with blood. There was nothing else there. There was no enemy. Nothing was in there shaking it. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why did you do that to me? Why did you do that? John, and it. then, you know, you go outside, and something attacked. Jump scared. But, yeah. yeah. But when I opened that locker, nothing. Just a, a locker filled with blood. And I was like, that's cool. Hmm. That stuff gets me. I love it. I don't know. It's I don't know why I love that so much. I think the possibility. It's like you go and it's like dark humor. Like most people don't mm-hmm. like dark humor, and then like I think that makes it so that you haven't like heard all the possible dark humor because so little people enjoy it. So mm-hmm. like if you have ninety percent of the people on TikTok like blah 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 like shouting all the what they think like you've seen that before. Like someone has a video of TikTok of doing ridiculous shit because it's like in the basis of reality. But if someone's like doing dark humor, and it's like there's so few people doing it that the possibilities are like you, you can go into more areas if you're allowed well, to because go into more it's areas. more taboo so there's less fleshing it out so yes. there's more untold stories more untold jokes more untold things more things that no one's actually said that might be friggin' hilarious might be over the line 
That might be hilarious, or might be crazy, or might be, whoa, that was nuts. I see what you're saying. Like, there's fewer artists working in the medium, so yeah. it's like how many games, fewer material. How many games like mm-hmm. Silent Hill are actually out there that, you know, you are fully engaged in, like... Resident Evil, Parasite Eve. Oh, damn, I was going to name four in a row, but I couldn't. <laughs> They're all big. So there aren't, yeah, but those, like, there aren't... You, you no, probably couldn't no, name a dozen kind of, of those. No, they kind of fall in by the wayside a little bit. It's weird. I'm sure all of it makes a comeback. That's cyclical too. Like horror isn't in right now, but I think yeah. Well, still. I don't. People don't yeah. like actual like they don't like horror movies when bad things are happening. They just like them when it's like things are euphoric. Happy. Yeah, it could be. That makes sense. Hmm. hmm. Man, I could go on forever if I didn't have to wrap it up. Wrap it up and go to the restroom. Yeah, you should probably do that as you're wrapping it up. Wrap it up, folks. So, what so, did we did we cover anything? Not really, no. We talked about haunting from all the different levels. You could be haunted because maybe you didn't buy the right stock a year or mm. two ago. You could be haunted because you, you did the worst decision of your life and you got drunk and you ran someone over and now it haunts you for the rest of your life and they let you off after parole, but... You killed someone. What do you do about that? What's your that would be fun. wait? I'm gonna stop you. Yeah, go ahead. What's the biggest opportunity that you passed by that you regret? Uh, I don't think I have any. You don't have any regrets. You just keep moving. You're in the now. I mean, no, no, no. I mean, I have plenty of regrets, but they're all small regrets that I don't know that it would have changed my life one way or the other. It's not like I'm like ah, I've been a millionaire. Oh, jeez. That Jeff Bezos guy, he was on to something. I should have went with him. Like, I don't have any of those. <laughs> like, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't have one that I'm like, whoa, that was the big one. It's more like uh, 10 million mini regrets. That's it. So you're saying, essentially, if you experience more of life, you have less to fear because the possibility of regrets changing you are smaller. The possibility Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, that makes actual sense because, I mean... As long as you're experiencing various parts of life and doing various things in life, if you do regret it, like, I don't know, doing something and regretting it is better than not doing it and regretting it. Mm. Does that make sense? Indeed. Yep. Fair. I like Haunting. So we talked about, yes. So we talked about things that haunt us, whether it's actual just boring stuff, which, uh, by the way, what? why aren't adults afraid of ghosts and stuff to the extent that children are? I think there's so much left unknown in the like the the mental structure of like an adult like they believe in the most ridiculous things even though they do that's why i wonder true. why they aren't like like i don't know any adults who are like i'm terrified of ghosts when i turn off the light i have to run to bed <laughs> is it and it's a little bit i make this joke to my son all the time he's like dad i'm scared to go downstairs and i'm like wait do wait do you have to pay taxes and realize that life is terrible <laughs> can I say that to him as a joke? <laughs> Maybe you realize that a ghost wouldn't be as bad as, like, I don't know, our ecosystem or, like, you know what I mean? Global like warming. Maybe? Yeah, like, do you think it's a little bit that, a little tongue-in-cheek? You're like, yeah, I wish ghosts were real, pal. They could fix all our problems. <laughs> I don't Get back know. to work. You're dead, buddy. <laughs> Get back to work. Get back to work. I feel like yeah, I wish a ghost would kill my boss. Like, yeah. Regardless of like the foundation that I don't know, I feel like kids don't have that foundation, so anything's possible. And okay, adults, so they whether their foundation like, is true or not, they have it kind of, regardless. That makes sense. And if their foundation is that ghosts are real, those people yeah. are insane. Like, get it, like we don't see them because they get put in mental asylums. Yeah, that's a good point. So we talked about hauntings. Hauntings like via bad decisions, hauntings, via adults who believe in ghosts. We even touched on the different ghosts that appear in our our lives, our Mm -hmm. systems. Mm -hmm. There are even virtual ghosts. Did we discuss that at all? No. You ever have, like, shit go nuts in a system? Unexplainable, 100% Mm -hmm. in a computer system. Get this. One time, my buddy Griff, he was using Rubicon, where we make our quotes, we do our orders, sales, stuff like that. He makes a quote, and the quote said it was by our manager, Libby. So she's a manager. Like, she has extra power. She can do extra shit. He was like, why does it say that? And we checked the log, and it says Libby created the quote. Libby did this. Libby did this. And he was like, what the fuck's going on? And he was like, hey, Libby, uh, it says I'm in as you from his computer. Hmm. 
and they called IT and everything, and he was like, yeah, just log out and log back in as yourself. And he was like, yeah, but Libby's never even sat at my computer in her entire life. And he's like, yeah, just something happened, man. You are logged in as Libby for 15 minutes. And I was like, Griff, we could have just canceled everyone's quotes. We could have caused chaos. We didn't know, but how the fuck does something like that happen? Do you ever have shit like that happen? I work in that field, so I just say, that's a bug. We'll just take that. Put it, of course put it in it's agile. A bug. I know it's a bug. But I'm saying, are some bugs ghosts? To some people. Fuck you. <laughs> anyway, we talked about virtual ghosts. We talked about real ghosts. We talked about ghost stories. We talked about sitting around the campfire and sucking off ghosts. Every time you yawn, folks, mm-hmm. you're opening your mouth for a ghost a wiener. That's right. Oof. Get a slimer. We talked about some horror movies and the horror genre. We talked about everything and anything, and we weren't pandering. Yeah. What do you think? Me, personally? Yeah. I liked it. Ooh. I liked it a lot. Dirty. <laughs> and we Folks, like we like you. We like you a lot. Check our socials. We do this all the time. This is a regular occurrence. It's called a podcast. Thanks for listening. And, uh... You already said we like you. We like you a lot. So good night. Thanks. Thanks. Sleep tight.